Man, with all this weird stuff going on, and almost done my my red wine. Man, I just want to go to bed. Oh, wait a second. Hello, folks. I'll get Shepard dressed for you. I'm the one, the only, I'm Hobo Tom, and we've had some weird things going on here. So I don't even know, I don't even know where to start. Um, wait, I always know where to start. That's with some thank yous. I have two thank yous to give out. Dustin Muffler, baby! You saw, just got tossed. That's because in Discord, I just frankly asked, which is bigger, Dana Brooks' fake tits or Lacey Evans' ass? He said, Dana's tits, not by much, though. And then, Coomer Sumer. Yeah, Coomer Sumer. You, sir, can walk out of here. I think that was in the response. I forget what to. All I know is that I wrote something. What did I put down? Oh yeah, something about Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddell being in the same room. Bro. Yeah. Uh, so with that being said, let's see here. We have two. You are two. Major announcement. One of them being something just released recently. Velveteen Dream. Shame on you, sir. Velveteen was in a car accident here in Florida. Um, the only thing we know, uh, WWE kind of released a very quick press statement. Velveteen Dream was in a car accident. And was released by him. He, I guess he was fine. It wasn't that bad. He was released from the hospital, though. So that was the hospital in Orlando. If anyone still wants to get there. It wasn't. You always know when it's real. Because when it's real, they say a hospital. When it's fake, they say medical facility. And that's an old story because... One day they actually did say a restaurant went to the hospital. Never went there. But a whole bunch of people did, though. Oh. And the... So that was major news story numero uno. And then major news story number dos. Oh. I, 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 was, I was implacably timed. But Tessa Blanchard has been Tessa Blanchard. You're fired. She was fired. Tessa Blanchard was fired. Fired by Impact Wrestling. No one has bigger balls than Madison Rain. Oh wait a second. No, that's um Scott something. Tessa Blanchard. She was fired from Impact Wrestling. Um, she like refused to do a promo, and people said, "We don't mind the fact that you're in Mexico, having God knows what, drinking who knows what, sharing the same bed with with how many people." But still, you have to do your work, Tessa. Even I know that. Even I do my work. 
They say, you shall be here online. I say, I'll be here online. I think my cat's getting bored, though. My cat was being fluffy all day. I'll tell you what, if there's another show like this, I don't know. I, I, I might become broken and just show cat videos. So I'll tell you what, this first hour of SmackDown, this was long. And of course, there's, I guess, well, that's it for the major announcements. Kind of the more minor ones, that the things that everyone's heard of, is the fact that there's a bunch of wrestlers and announcers, Renee, Kayla, that have come down with COVID-19 in WWE. So they've made people wear masks. Um, some people aren't happy about it. And they've resorted to doing double tapings. So I think this was like, I think they had the three matches taped. They said, screw it. Put on the Undertaker. Because I'm the man. And I have the algorithm. Cleveland. So, yep. Yeah. So, I'll tell you what. If this keeps on going on and they just have tribute shows. Only because I've talked about things before. I don't mind mentioning it. But I'm not going to go into great detail about stuff. And that's really bad. But so for today's... Well, let's go to SmackDown! Wow, that first hour took forever. It just felt so long. Um, it was a tribute to The Undertaker. Um, and like everyone was outside, too. Heels and face. Kayfabe is dead, folks. I don't know. I mean... Nikki Cross, I, uh, who's single? Oh, uh, Alicia Fox. Might as well go up and down my street. Just in her Sergeant Pepper hat. That'd be cool. I do want to see Shotsky Blackheart drive her little mini tank around the one open air mall in Daytona. Either one of them, actually. That would be pretty cool. Especially if they announced it. That would be cool. Oh, I think about that. But Kayfabe is dead! I, the man with the algorithm, killed it! I'll tell you what, we're having this COVID-19. This is this is weird things happening here in Daytona Beach. You have to be careful. You know, in three weeks, there's going to be... Three weeks from Sunday is extreme, like, horror show something. <laughs> but let's get to some SmackDown. So, yeah, so... Heels and Face were, were chanting, Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker. Yeah, for a while. And um, then they had the Survivor Series debut of The Undertaker by the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Everybody has a price. Somebody's got to pay. I bring you The Undertaker. And that's probably the last great gimmicky gimmicked wrestler that the WWE had. And he lasted a long time, too. Because he lived that. That's cool. Uh, so Survivor Series 1990, again, introduced by the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase and the Million Dollar Team, when Survivor Series actually meant something. Um, showed him, like, body slam some people, tombstone, pile drive, he choked Bret Hart. Then John Cena and his character, I don't know, they, they call him Roman Reigns? But they were talking all about The Undertaker. And then they get to the Boneyard match. Yes. Um, uh, as they would go to commercial when they would come back. Kane! Well, Glenn Jacobs was talking about his match with The Undertaker. That was pretty cool. And then 
Baron Corbin came out and hey, Undertaker is not Baron Corbin. I'll talk trash about not Baron Corbin, Undertaker. So yeah, he talked trash. Jeff Hardy came out, um, beat up Baron Corbin because Jeff Hardy is, I think, Undertaker is one of those very few wrestlers, unlike Hulk Hogan, who actually want to put younger talent over. Uh, Undertaker did that. I don't think he put him over, but he definitely gave him a big rub, though. Again, not something Hogan would do. Um, so Jeff Hardy wanted to defend the honor of the Undertaker, and before that, we had uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kurt Angle gave gave their comments on a, on Undertaker, and not Kayla, because Kayla has coronavirus. Uh, did a little under, did a brief interview with Jeff Hardy and uh, and. Not Undertaker, Baron Corbin. Uh, I forgot her name. Christy, I think something. She used to be in NXT. Then they promoted her. I don't think NXT. Although it's been a while. It's geez, it's been. Oh whoa! Last match I saw was in like November. November, December, um, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. I mean, it's been like eight months. Whoa! Since I've since AEW has been to Daytona Beach, that's free K. So yeah, um, I forget her name, but she's in. If you go back into my studio, she's there. I think she's. And a couple of thumbnails. Again, it's not Kayla. Kayla. Kayla caught syphilis from from. Oh no! 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 Not that. Yeah, she didn't catch anything from Angel Garza. She caught coronavirus. And Renee Young also. Oh, well, it's been known. Renee Young also has said coronavirus. And because her and John Moxley play tonsil hockey, probably fairly often. John Moxley, like I reported in my AEW show, John Moxley also has said said coronavirus, and I think YouTube's finally let up with stuff with coronavirus because Florida. Oh wait, no, that has nothing to do with Florida actually. Well, Texas is tightening up. Florida might go back to lockdown soon though, which is kind of freaky. I know my third job. Where I work kind of tomorrow afternoon. Sales have slightly declined. Instead of having $10,000 Sundays, we have $7,000 Sundays, which is still piles of money over what we're used to getting, but people are getting shopped out. So oh, I do have to get some supplies. Bath and Body Works. I need to get some stuff from them. I hope I can get that tomorrow or Sunday. They have stupid hours. Oh, yeah, by the way, stores keep normal hours. If the mall is going to be open till 7, be open till 7. Don't annoy me with, like, posting random hours. And just close some stores. Get, get rid of them. Get rid of that one terrible home decor store. Say, you're, you're out of here. Make some money, at least. But enough about that, that nonsense. Um, first match of the night oh, for a Halloween horror match for Bailey's belt. This will be interesting. One, I'll tell you what. Once they said a horror match, there's only one person involved in this match who could be in a horror match. That's Nikki Cross. That's a dead giveaway because it was Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Cross versus Dana Brooke versus Lacey Evans. So it starts off Alexa Bliss's music plays and Nikki Cross's music. I think Nikki Cross eventually might be the most successful person in sanity. Indeed. 
Um, so it starts off Nikki and Alexa team up. However, Nikki Cross went, gave she gave Alexa Bliss a hug and rolled her up. That's terrible. Food. I can't say that. I can't do Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is so good. Oh, and by the way, Nikki Cross just like took her vest right off. Oh no, Nikki's boobies are getting bigger. I I have I fear Nikki Cross is putting on the Corona Thirty. Oh, I have to tell my friend that I lost weight. I'm happy. I, I've lost ten pounds since the gym reopened. It's relief. And with the three jobs, hopefully for a little bit longer. Boats coming soon. This is good. But so uh, Nikki went to the hug to the roll up. Alexa um, did a fancy roll up onto Alexa Bliss. That was pretty cool. Kind of like the standing llama Hestra. Uh, Lacey Evan then gets involved, sends Alexa into I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. So the barricade gets involved. Dana Brooke then gets involved. Uh, Nikki Cross goes Nikki Cross. Um, she gets double teamed. Everyone gets their, their, their kicks on poor Nikki. Um, Nikki and Alexa then, again, they start to do double team moves. The double... But then they got stuck in the corner. And Lacey Evans hit him with a double Bronco Buster. So poor Nikki and Alexa. They got a little closer together. Dana Brooke had a lazy body slam. Botch! Because that just looked terrible. It, it looked like either... She couldn't pick up Lacey Evans. So she wanted to just kind of like roll her on her back. Or Lacey Evans just did like a somersault as soon as she felt. Because it was just, blah, not good. Tell you what, Dana Brooke does have. She does have some big boobies. The big fake boobies. That. Dana Brooke's looking a little fake. I liked her. And her NXT day. She looks so natural. She had big boobies back then, but now they just got too big. Um, then Dana Brooke. Again, hit the senton. That looked really good, though. Broken up by Nikki Cross. Lacey knows how to do a leg sweep. She swept the leg. Whoa, that look like it took skill. Uh, Dana Brooke. Ken did some. Uh, broke up the pin there. And there's a roll up by Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross wins by roll up. It wasn't Luxa Bliss. I think it was. Um, I don't think it was Dana Brooke either. Lacey Evans got the roll up, got rolled up. Overall, I can't complain about this match, folks. This was a cheeseburger match. Then <sighs> there was more about the Undertaker this time. High praise coming from his boss, Paul Levesque, Triple H. And Michael Hickenbotham, he's going to probably be a trainer with. I think I've heard various things. Um, Undertaker, he's retired from wrestling. With the caveats being, when he's in Orlando, he just wants to stop by the Performance Center, which is cool being that guest coach. That's always cool. Or if Vince needs that big draw for like a, like a WrestleMania. Kind of as like the celebrity guest wrestler. Uh, Undertaker's a shoe in for the Hall of Fame, whatever that is. And then let's see here. The next match we had the New Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. Because, ah, oh, people at home, don't you dare be sour. I like the fact they said, ah, oh, people at home. That's different. Uh, it was a new day in Lucha House Party, taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Miz and Morrison. Uh, Biggie and Miz, they start the match. Miz just gets manhandled. Poor Miz gets freaking destroyed. John Morrison still looks utter. His entrance is just the best, though. 
Um, the volunteers, actually, I did note this. Some of them did have masks on. Indeed. And there was something else I mentioned. Oh, yeah, that was a Velvet Union. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I already talked about that stuff. Yeah, but, but some of the crowd did have masks on, though. They're smart. Maybe I'll invite El Vagabundo Dos Hobo, and he can wear his mask. One day to do one of these shows instead of me. Well, well, wait, I, I've had him do one of these shows before. It was so bad, I'm like, no, it's, it's El, El Vagabundo's turn. Sure, we haven't seen Dr. Tom in a while either. And I don't know, this, 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 this other f creepy man comes in and says, hey, man. I don't, I don't want to summon him by accident. But so with this match, uh, Biggie and Miz, Miz gets stretched. Uh, again, Miz gets manhandled a lot. Lince Dorado gets tossed from the top after he tags in Biggie. Biggie tosses him right on top of Miz. I like the fact that Biggie uses people as weapons. That's pretty cool. Uh, Kofi tags in. So does John Morrison, the two fastest people in the ring. Then Shinsuke eventually gets in sometime after the break. Uh, Kofi hits the running stomp on him. Grand Metalik and Morrison. Oh. Uh, one day they just have to let the Johnny Mundo go, Johnny Impact, or or yeah, they have to let they the WWE needs to let Johnny John Morrison go, Johnny Mundo. That's all that has to be said. Uh, then there was a Lucha Destroyer by Lindsay Dorado, followed by and then uh, by Grand Metal Leak. And then Lindsay Dorado followed with a big splash that was really cool. All eight men kind of face off. The rope walking by Grand Malik was utterly amazing. He had a leg, hit, hit the big elbow off the ropes. And that was enough to finish off The Miz? Uh, have, have, is Miz going to take a break? Because I know he has two kids. The prolificness, the, the, the fertility of, of Maurice. You might have a third kid on the way. You never know. Or he just might well say, you know what, I want to relax for a while, I'll spend some time with my kids while all this stuff happens. Can't blame him for that. This was another fun match. A cheeseburger match. Then we had a Baron Corbin interview. And wow, that just makes me want to drink more red wine, folks. Ah, yum. Then Braun comes out and talks about how a water moccasin bit Bray in the face. Wait, wait, wait a second. Bray Wyatt should be dead. Water, mo water moccasin bites you in the face. Oh, crikey. That's like death. They're not the most venomous snake in Florida. The most venomous snake in in Florida, things in Australia will just flat out kill you. In Florida, the most venomous one is the coral snake, though. Or a moccasin. Again, it's lethal, though. Unlike the pygmy rattlesnake, which is non-lethal. That still doesn't sound good. Um, so, I don't know. You might be hearing that creepy voice. Again, Maybe Braun will, will turn back to the swamp, but didn't Ray, I'm sorry, Randy Orton already burn down the house? Or burn down the shack? I don't know. Whatever. Um, then it was Batista and. Mankind talking about The Undertaker. You kind of have to have Mankind and Undertaker in the same sentence most of the time, mainly because of the one, like the, the craziest hell. I don't think it was the first one. The first one, first Hell in the Cell was Kane versus, no, Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. That's when Kane showed up. But again, Undertaker and Mankind, they're like kind of synonymous together. For the Hell in the Cell when Foley took stupid bumps and Vince told him never do that again. 
Um, then we have our main event. It was Jeff Hardy and Baron Corbin. Uh, Corbin, for the most part, just fun. Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy went running towards him, ate a clothesline. Just starts to beat him up then. Uh, then there was, uh, this time, Jeff Hardy missed a baseball slide to the outside. Uh, Corbin got sent over the table. Double axe. Oh, double axe handle. I love the double axe handle. That actually had, that, even though it's probably the, the least painful thing, it always was impressive, especially when, like, the guys in the 70s and 80s did it. Nostalgia is still a heck of a glass of red wine. refreshing then we went to break and we come back and it's a lumberjack match because everyone's outside the ring cheering all the faces are on the outside of the ring cheering on Jeff indeed and for some reason Matt Riddle was there like dates although granted he is in legal action but yeah, people said not so kind of things about Matt Riddle, bro. <laughs> I have no idea. Then Drew Gulak wasn't there, but noticeably missing was Daniel Bryant. He's on hiatus. I think he wants to enjoy the birth of his second kid. And if you watch Total Bellas, I don't know, you can say whatever about that. I haven't watched that show since. It just got boring. It's not fun without John Cena anymore. Um, there was no whisper in the wind either. Uh, Baron Corbin hit the deep six. And he goes outside. Uh, he face washes Jeff Hardy against the thing. Jeff Hardy um, comes in the ring. I guess it's a swanton bomb. I don't know. I only know Jeff Hardy won. Baron Corbin lost. That was a good enough match. A cheeseburger match. And that's all for this week. So I am all off Saturday, Sunday. Um, I'll be back Monday to talk about Raw. Tuesday I might be a little bit late because I, I do have to work both jobs, do grocery shopping on Tuesday. So Tuesday I will be back sometime to talk about Impact Wrestling. Wednesdays, AEW. Tuesday, Bob. Friday, we'll see what's going on SmackDown. If it's a recap SmackDown or a really bad SmackDown, you might see cat videos instead. Then another aspect is that you'll see how she really doesn't help me work. She'll just flop between me and the computer. So well, that's it, folks. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, if you think I've missed or said anything false about news stories, always feel free to correct me. You can send me an email saying, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Or, oh, my God. Gosh, Hobo Tom, you're actually spot on for a change. All that, and we have a good weekend. Take care, man. Bye. Forward stuff happens, man.